Welcome back everyone. It has been about a year since Ryan and I built our solar heater wall and we have learned a lot over the last year. So in this video, we're gonna do a year recap on lessons learned, things that we wish we had done differently, improvements we've made since the last video and our plans for the future. So if you've been following along, you may know that we're starting to build a second solar heater wall at Ryan's shop back at our off-grid build site. So today's gonna be a quick little video, jumping into all the details on just what has happened since our last video. We've had a lot of questions from you guys. So I'm gonna grab Ryan and we can dive in. And today is definitely the day to talk about heat because it got down to negative 27 degrees here in Minnesota. You can hear the squeaky snow underneath me. So definitely heat is top of mind. All right, I will give you a quick summary of what the solar heater wall is for those of you who didn't see our first video, but I would urge you to go back if you're really interested because we go into good detail there about how we built it. But the general principle is we have a dark wall with a bunch of greenhouse panel in front of it. This is creating an air gap the sun heats up the back dark wall, that is a Duroc cement board, heats that up. The warm air rises inside the solar wall gap. And when the warm air rises, it turns on some fans and the fans pull the heat into the room. So this is passive solar heating. It's pretty simple. It just sits here and runs every day for us. We don't have to touch it. And it, it's really making a difference. So what we wanna talk about is some of the assumptions we made when we built it versus how they're actually working now. And there's definitely some things I would have done differently in hindsight, and we're gonna do differently when we build the next one out at the, uh, the new shop. So while we're out here, we'll talk about the first one you can see, which is these solar panels. We put these solar panels in uh, for our grid tie solar system and installed them in a way to provide some shade to the solar wall during the summer. The idea being we'll reduce the amount of direct sunlight to the solar wall so it doesn't pump heat in the summer. We overdid it. They cover, you'll see we are at uh, early February right now, and they are providing a bunch of shade onto the solar wall right now when we really need the sun on it. The other problem that solar panels have right now is they are so low that they are shaded by these trees and we're not getting very good solar production. We are, again, in early February. We're about halfway from solstice to solstice, so we should be getting decent sun now it's still, we're not getting a lot of solar production nearly as much as we were expecting. Last spring, we learned an important lesson. We thought we could just shut the fans off and it would stop the heat from coming in the room for the most part. We thought we'd get some, but we thought it would mostly stop it. And what we found is that wasn't true. It was still pumping with uh, the heat rising, was pumping a lot of heat into the shop. It was raising the temperature quite a bit. We also figured out too that the heat was bowing the greenhouse panels. They were actually flexing and coming out. It's a pretty scary setup. And on top of that, we got some comments from you guys saying that you had run systems like this back in the 70s on, on grain drying or something like that. And over time, the wood in the zone, uh, in the solar heater wall would dry out enough that it would spontaneously combust and burn down the building. Scared us. So we went and bought 100% uh, UV blocking tarps and hung them on the wall. And just that by itself completely shut off the heat. It, we had no heat coming into the shop during the summer. It really worked. This idea of doing the solar panels out to provide some shade was an additional help to maybe we wouldn't have to do that as much. But at the end of the day, the tarps work great. So we'll just do that. And some other big work that we did, you can probably see that this kind of area is looking a whole lot different than it did in our original video. So we had quite, a, I think the tree line was about to here. So we spent a lot of time getting all those trees pushed back. So the tree line is further back and Ryan did some great work grading this out. So this is an awesome kind of parking lot for us now, but even still we are getting some shade on the solar panels. It's just kind of nature of the beast around here, especially with the sun being so low in the winter time, we would have to take out a lot more trees, but what we did do has made a big difference. So I'm glad we made that improvement at least. But one more piece that we are hoping to do soon, as you can see in here, it's pretty dense. And not only is that blocking our sunlight, but it's just too dense for tree health anyway. So a lot of those spruce will get in and thin that out and hopefully that'll help. But here you can see the sun is just starting to poke through where along here it was behind these trees. So at least this little gap, we have some good sunlight. I think that's about it for out here. So let's go inside and talk about some of the things that I would have done differently. And then also it's, I don't know, you 
probably can't hear it from here, but the fans are really cranking and it's fun to hear when you get in there. So we'll go see how it's doing. One of the things we found during the spring and fall on a day that it wasn't too cold out is it would get way too hot in here. The fans would kick on, the solar heater wall would really be cranking and it would be 75, 80 degrees in here. It's way too hot. So I added this thermal switch. This is a thermostat off of like an electric baseboard heater. This is just like any electric heater control. It's a full, full current switch, not like a millivolt thermostat, but when it gets to temperature, it just shuts off. So that is wired in series with our other control system here. Shuts the fans off when it gets too hot. Keeps it from getting too hot in here. It was a, it was a pretty important add. The number one thing I would change about this, and I wish I had done it when we built it, and a bunch of you commented this on our first video, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, but uh, after a year of using this, I think it's absolutely necessary. I would add a flap on the outside of this, secured at the top, to keep backdrafting from happening at night. So at night, when it gets cold in the space, the cold air settles and it reverse pumps back into the room. It's not horrible, horrible, because this greenhouse panel is insulated, but it is significant. And it's just, you know, in the game we're playing here, of passive heat generation and being energy efficient. It just really bothers me. Unfortunately, the way we built this, it's gonna be really tough for me to come back and reinstall them now. I'm still trying to think of a good way to do it, but uh, I'm definitely doing it on the next one. That's just, I'd say that's absolutely my number one thing I wish I had done. And today was the perfect day to do the video for you guys because we got back down into the cold temps. It was negative 27 last night. We're at a high of nine degrees. And here in the shop, it was 47 degrees this morning, and I'll show you on the thermometer where we're at now. And we are almost up to 55 degrees now. And we're not even at the warmest part of the day yet, so hopeful we'll get a few more degrees out of it yet today. For the final point that I wanna make on the things I would do different, I wanna come out to the new solar wall. This is the one that's in progress at the new shop. We got stuck because it got too cold and we couldn't shoot paint this fall and as soon as it warms up, we'll finish it up. We'll do a video about it. But this wall is gonna have zero combustible materials in the solar wall. That one back there, I think I mentioned earlier that we had some feedback that people had issues with them spontaneously combusting. So this one is the Durock, and it's gonna be all aluminum frame with the greenhouse panel on it. There's gonna be zero material that can uh, combust inside of it so that if something does go wrong, we forget to put the tarp over it or something happens to where it gets really hot, it's not gonna light anything on fire. We're not gonna have a problem with that. Well, I think that wraps it up for just kind of our year assessment of the solar wall overall. Been pretty happy with it, minus yeah. the few improvements that we know now. So hopefully you learned some good lessons from our mistakes, but I'm excited for our future solar wall. I think that one's gonna be dialed in really great. We'll make sure to do a video on that once it finally warms up around here so we can actually spray paint and all that. So maybe April, yeah, a couple March, months. we'll yeah. see. Depends on how the spring goes. So far it's been a very cold 2025. So <laughs> I expect April. <laughs> But as always, we so appreciate you guys tuning in. If you have any further questions about the solar wall, ask away. We love hearing from you all. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you on the next video.